Good afternoon, my friends. This is Pastor Omar Muhammad. I see someone's already online waiting. I'm glad that you're here with me. If you don't mind, identify yourself. Appreciate that. I'm always looking for interaction. DS Fake 57, DMBTY 366 join. Welcome. This is Pastor Omar Muhammad. I'm a proactive agent of change who lives in order that other people might be healed, liberated, and appreciated. Pepper Kelly, good to see you. Thank you for joining. Today's uh, word is coming from a meditational thought. Caulking joint, good to see you caulking. Right now you're looking at my fish pond, and I wanted to um, read something to you before I uh, talk about this. Luke Periscope 1, good to see you. Welcome, good afternoon. This is Pastor Omar Muhammad. I'm a proactive agent of change who communicates so that other people are healed liberated and appreciated today i am going to be dealing with the subject get off of your assets that's right alicia rich good to see you get off of your assets is the subject today alicia and we are talking about this uh, i'm reading from an ancient um, portion of uh, scripture where it says there uh, it was a, it was a parable of um of of my teacher jesus he he, he said this in a parable but welcome john paul who know? Good to see you. Hi, Alicia. I'm glad you said hi. Welcome. I'm talking about the subject today. Get off of your assets. And um, I've been meditating on this thought that had me captivated for the past couple of hours, actually. And it came from a scripture. I was reading an ancient scripture uh, in um, one, something called the gospel. And it said this. But the master answered and said, excuse me, it says this. And the one also who had received one talent came and said, Master, I knew that you were a hard man, reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you scattered no seed. And I was afraid, and went and hid my talent in the ground. See, you have what is yours. But the master answered and said to him, You wicked, lazy slave, you knew that I reap where I did not sow, and gathered where I did not sow seed. You ought to have put my money in the bank. Good to see you, David Boz. This is Omar. I know some people are going to be with me. I was reading a little bit of ancient scripture. It was a, it was a, a parable of um, the master teacher, Jesus. And he was...
he was talking about um, assets or talents. And he said to this this guy, Tom, it's good to see you. He said to this guy, he said, look, um, he, he had given some talents to these people. He went away for a long time. Al Brun, good to see you. He gave some talents to the people. He went away for a while. And when he came back, he wanted to check and see what they did with the talents that he gave them. Uh, this one guy had five talents. He said, man, look, I took these five talents and made five more talents. And he said, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with little. I'll make you ruler over much. And then another guy, he had like, uh, I think it was one talent or two talents. He took those and he said, look, I, I multiplied my talent. It was two. And he said, he got another hundred percent. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. But the other one who had one talent, he said, man, look, here's your talent. I'm giving it back to you. He said, and it looked like the master was looking at him and telling him about the story. He said, what? You gave, him, gave it back to me. He said, take that what he had, take that talent that he had, give it to the guy who had ten, and you get away from me. You, you lazy, he called him a lazy and evil servant. And man, Jeffrey, that bothered me. Maurice Johnson, uh, Samson, I'm so glad to see you. I'm talking about the subject, um, F.W. Hug. I'm talking about the subject today, get off of your asset. And I realized, I said, why in the world would Jesus tell this story? It's a horrible story. It scared me. It made me mad because I realized that in the story, the, the person who gives out the talents and the gifts, that's God. And God gives everybody, you and everybody who's on this call, he has given each of us gifts. And I believe that we are in the age of what we call multiple giftedness. So we're not just giving us one gift. He's giving us many gifts. Good to see you, mama, little boy. I'm so glad you're here. Don't you know, mama, little boy, that God wants you to use the gift that he's giving you? I entitled this, Get Off of Your Asset. Some of us have been sitting on our assets. Some of us have been sitting on our gifts, and we have not used them. The, 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 God, the great God of all creation has given us abundant gifts to be able to read, to write, to intellect, to, to come up with business, to have new ideas. He's given us abundant gifts and talents, and many of us are sitting on them because we are afraid to use them, afraid of what might happen if we use our gifts. Some of us have even psychic ability. I'm not telling them what they said. I don't want to tell them what they thought because they're afraid to use their gift. They're afraid that they might be uh, some kind of way exposed or, or they, they, they have this wrong view of God. What I realized, the whole thing about getting off your asses, we had to come up with a different way of understanding who gave us the gifts? First of all, the one who gave us all the gifts that we have is God Almighty. He has given us gifts galore. He has just given, he said, in fact, I put me inside of you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. I put my whole spirit in you. I didn't give you a piece of my spirit. I gave you all of my spirit so you can do whatever you want. In fact, he said, when you start getting together with good people who have thinking the right mind, whatever you ask, you can have whatever you ask. I'm saying today, God is saying to us, get off of our assets. Stop sitting on them. The only reason why we're sitting on them, we have a wrong view of God. Remember I told you I started this thing with a parable of the great master teacher Jesus who was talking about, he was talking about, how, uh, talking about a parable about these people who had been, was given these, these gifts and given these talents and he just left and said, I'm going to come back and check on them. Two of the people, they went and multiplied their talents 100%. They took what God gave them and ran with it. They weren't scared. They realized God is cool, that God is good. Now, now the thing said that, he said, we knew that you, you reap where you did not sow and you pick a harvest where you did not plant. And so he was talking about God. He said, man, what is it about you? He was talking about the, the keeper then, but really when we think about it, it's really about God. God does reap where he does not sow. He is in this world using you and me to do great and mighty things. And it's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. He don't give everybody the same gifts. I know we want to think everybody got the same gifts, but everybody is not a Beyonce. Everybody can't sing like her. Everybody ain't got body like her. They're just not like her. Everybody's not a Jay-Z or any of these other people that we look at. We are all have our one unique individual gifts, and God wants us to use our gifts, not just one. I believe we're in a multiple time. So we have to get off of our asses. The only reason why we get scared is that we, we're afraid we have a wrong concept of God. We think if we do something wrong, God's going to smash us, or God's going to get us, or, or we're going to get punished, or something crazy is going to happen to it. No, God does not, did not give you all those gifts and that talent, that beauty, that intellect, that wisdom, that understanding. God didn't give you all that so you can sit on your asset. He didn't want you to sit on your gift. 
He wants you to take that gift out and use it. Don't go bury it and hide it. Oh, I'm too smart. I'm too this. So, my wife always getting on me because she said I got a problem with that. I sit on my asses. In fact, the reason why I'm, I'm doing this um, message is because I was so convicted. Good to see you, Dirty Taffy. I'm glad that you're here. You are here because God wants you to get up off of your assets. That's right. He wants you to hear this message about getting up off of your assets. You might tell your friends, man, oh, go check out what this pastor always oh, talking about. He's talking crazy, talking about get up off of your assets. I am because God showed me that we have to get up off of our assets. We have been sitting on these gifts. Some of us know how to make uh, start businesses. Some of us know how to make money, how to write, how to teach, how to communicate. Harris, I'm so glad to see you, Harris J. Um, Harris J., I think that's right. I'm glad you're here. This is Pastor O talking about get up off of your assets. God has gifted each and every person on this line, even the people who are going to see this in the rebroadcast. Do you know that each one of you are uniquely ordained, gifted, Individual God, each one of you have a, what I call the God nature in you, a slice of God's presence, a slice of God's purpose in you. You can do what he did. He said, um, go forth, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Each of us has the opportunity to go forth and replenish, not just making a whole bunch of babies. Now, if you're out there making them babies and you ain't got no husband, no wife, no plan, no program for them babies, stop it. Now, I ain't talking about you. You go sit down. <laughs> but if you are somebody who is responsible, yes, yeah, good to see you, KT, K, uh, KZ. Good to see you. Casey, I'm glad you're here. This is Pastor Omar. We're talking about uh, get up off of your assets, realizing that God has given us assets. We are studying from um, one of the ancient teachers, Jesus the Christ. We are studying his parable about the talents. The guy who had some five talents, the guy who had four talents, three, two talents, the guy who had one talent, the guy who had one talent or one meaning. You know what he did? I am a one who submits to the will of God. I am. That's who I am. So I was born in the Muslim faith. I've continued to read the Quran, to read the Bible, to read the Torah, and understand that we are all children of the living God. Thank you for asking that question. That was a great question for you to ask. Yes, that's how I got the name, Omar Muhammad. Omar is the talkative servant of God. Abdullah is, my, oh, my name is Omar Abdullah Muhammad. Omar is the talkative servant. Abdullah is the servant of God. Muhammad is the one, the helper, the comforter. So I am the talkative servant of God, the helper, the comforter. That's the gift that my father gave me by naming me and bringing me up in Islam. The one thing I got when I was a Muslim was the belief in one God. There's one creator, one eternal God who created all of us and put gifts inside of each and every one of us. That's why I'm here today to say, look, we got to get rid of this false view about God. Some of us are so afraid of God, we're afraid of making a mistake, afraid of stepping out to that new business, to that new venture. We think that God won't be with us. Alhamdulillah, good to see you, brother. I'm glad to see you. I'm, I'm glad. Alhamdulillah, God is good. Listen, we are here talking about how God wants us to get up off of our assets, Iceman 22. He don't want you to sit on them gifts. You have been gifted. You are, you are so full of gifts, it's not funny. And then you know you're gifted because people come and say, say to you, uh, you got great potential. You got great potential. But just like me, I'm in my 50s now. If I'm still sitting on my potential, I want to use up all my potential right now. So give, get up off of your asset. Use your potential. Realize that God is not somebody to be afraid of, to be fearful of. Don't be worried about him coming to smash you. He ain't going to smash you. He, all he wants, he said, in fact, yesterday I talked about this. God has been thinking about you. He has got a perfect plan to put in place with you. He wants you to co-labor with him, planning your success, planning your business, planning your marriage, planning your family, planning your future. He wants to work with you to do that. So he wants you to do the work. Real talk for real. I know that's right, Brother Harris. He wants us to do the plan. Do the work and then present that plan before him. And when we present that plan before him, then he'll show us how to implement our plan. But we got to do something. Time out for the witchcraft prayers. We just praying. We got a genie in the bottle. We just praying to wish and we wish God is coming through. Wish God is through. Every single prayer that we ever make has a mandate and a responsibility for us to do something about making that prayer come to pass. Making that prayer come into reality. So God told me today, the word is get up off of your assets, man. And do something. I have given you so many gifts and talents. There's no reason why you are not as successful as you want to be. Me and you together, man, that's a mighty team. You don't need any other partner. But you're going to have other partners because in this world, we have, we, the new thing is to collaborate. We have to collaborate with one another, get with people who are like-minded and roll with them. People who can stretch you, not the people that you get. Some of the people you got to leave behind. Forget about the family reunion. Forget about the high school reunion and all that. That's good, but you can't stay back in the past. We in the present right here and right now. So God is saying... Get up off of your assets. Understand that he has given each of uh, every one of us a gift, multiple gifts. We are to look at the world and find out where the needs are in this world that our gift uniquely supplies. For me, 
I am a deep student of, 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 of ancient scripture. I studied the Bible. I studied the Quran. I studied the Torah. I studied all the ancient scriptures so I can understand what are the spiritual principles that are necessary for us to have success in this life. I don't believe that the, the ancients came here and did not leave us breadcrumbs on how to find success in this life. Their bread, the, the, the pyramids are breadcrumbs. So us, to us to understand, hey, there is a God, and there is direct order, there is mathematical understanding, there is wonderful things. So we're going to use these gifts and these talents, and we're going to get up off of our assets, and we're going to do something today. How many people are with me? Is anybody out there with me? You feeling me? You're going you're gonna to share some love? Because here, I'm going to ask you, give me some love. Let me know you're with me. Continue to communicate with me. Type something like your brother asked me whether I'm Muslim. Hey, I, a Muslim really means one who submits to the will of God. Yeah, man, I love this. I'm so glad to hear that, Brother Harris. I'm so glad because we need, um, I don't know if you're brother or sister, but whoever you are, you, you're one of my family members. And I love you because you're listening. You're taking the time to hear this because we got to get up off our, our assets. The main problem is this. Get this. It was about fear. The only reason why God called that man a lazy, yes. Yes, one <laughs> brother in Islam. That's good. I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear that. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be unto you, my brother. For some people who don't understand that, they thought I said something bad. I just said, peace be unto you. It's a greeting of peace, and that's for everybody in this group, not just the people who claim to be Muslim, but all people who submit, who claim to submit the will of God. That's who I'm talking to today. We have to modify our worldview of how we see God. So many times we've been thinking that God was waiting to find us in a mistake or a sin. When my, and my definition of sin is anyone who misses the perfect mark of love. When we are missing the perfect mark of love in our relationship with other people, we are in what I call sin. So, if we are missing that perfect mark of love, then God is not waiting to just jam us up and to put us in hell fire over some, some mistake that we have made. He knows that we are human. He knows that we are making mistakes. But he's also gifted us and equipped us with the spirit of the living God inside of us, with gifts and talents and abilities around us. So what we need to do as, as, as real believers is we need to say, okay, God, what am I here for? What do you want for me to do? God does love us more than our own mothers. He wants us to be with him. And, oh, yes, and guess what? And you're absolutely right. And be with him in paradise. But paradise is, some of us, that's the, that's the cold thing about it. Some of us are waiting to die to go to paradise. Do you realize that wherever you and God is, there's paradise already? Uh, uh, Jesus, uh, was one of the uh, prophets, told us that, you know, the kingdom of heaven is within you. Not outside you. Not, so some people are sitting around waiting to die so they can experience paradise with God. What is wrong with that? There's something wrong with that. And that's why we're sitting on our gifts and don't know, and don't know it. I am so broken hearted today realizing that out of fear, I, I was paralyzed by fear of what God might do or that I might mess up for God. God knows my mistakes. He would take. He said, "All things will work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to His purpose." So He's got us. He's going to work this situation out, brother. So I appreciate the love that you share and that you interact with me. You right. God is closer to us than our mother and loves us more than our mother because He created our mother. He is the ultimate creator, and he put that creative energy in with us. I know that we understand that God has no partners in the sense that of creation, but in the sense of doing something and making something in this world, he wants to co-create with us. He wants us to say, hey, man, I created you in my image. You know, I created things. I, I, make, I like to make things. I like to make new things, and I, I made you with that same kind of mindset. So today, please, my, my friend, help me. Would you please make a commitment to ask God, show me how... I'm going to tell you about that, that in a minute. Show me how about Christianity. Show me how to know and to grow. The thing about Christianity was this. I read the, I was in a crisis situation, and I was wondering about God. And I was, I was selling my, actually selling my blood plasma um, to make it. I was homeless. I didn't know where I was going. And I, and I, you know, you know even though I was raised as a Muslim, I was not living a, 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 a Quranic Muslim life. But then something said to me, you know, um, why don't you read the Bible? I said, I'm not, I don't want to read the Bible. I was taught that the Bible was full of lies and half-truths. So I said, I don't want to read the Bible. But they said, did you read the Quran? I said, I said, yes, I read the Quran. How did you read the Quran? I said, I asked God for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And he gave me wisdom, knowledge, and understanding as I read the Quran. But while I was reading the Quran, I remember in Surah chapter 3, I think it was the cow, and I was starting reading about this particular character named Jesus. I'm like, man, I never heard about Jesus like that. The only Jesus I heard about was the blonde haired blue-eyed Jesus they got hanging on the wall in there. And, you know, I'm not feeling that Jesus. Because, you know, I don't know about all that. 
And so something said in my spirit, well, why don't you read the Bible to find out? And I read the Bible, and I found out that the Bible confirmed most of the stuff that was already in the Quran, as far as the, the, how God created man and all that kind of stuff. And I was like, wait a minute. And it also, the, the Quran and the Bible talked about this character named Jesus. So I became a disciple of Jesus. That's right. So in terms of, they call, they call the disciples of Jesus Christians. But I am a disciple of Jesus, learning his ways. The prophet is, is um, um, Yahshua. Hamashiach in Greek, I mean in Hebrew, but Yahshua, Jesus in Latin, that, I don't know that Jesus form, but whatever it is, you guys know what I'm saying, it means Yahweh saves. So that's how I became this individual who continually transforms and evolves to be. So uh, you ask me, am I one who submits to the will of God? Absolutely. And you and I both know what that is, right? So am I, if I, if y'all, am I a student of Jesus? Absolutely. And they call the students of Jesus Christians. So I am a proactive agent of change is how I say it now who lives that other people might be liberated, healed, and appreciated. And today, my concern is that we need to get up off of our assets and get to work. How do we do that? First of all, we readjust our worldview about God. He is not up there waiting for us to die. He wants us to experience paradise, heaven, whatever you want to call it, right now. Time out for all that waiting to die. We living to die so that we can go and spend time with God? Oh man, that ain't even right. That's, that's, that's a waste of a good life. God wants us to experience his life right here, right now, in the present moment. So I hope for you, hope you got a little bit of this love that I'm trying to share with you. Get off of your assets. Change your worldview. Stop being afraid of God. Instead of running from God, run to God and realize that he is already giving you everything you need to be successful in this world. He's giving you his spirit. He's giving you his love. He's giving you all these technology. Look at that. I'm using an iPad out here in my backyard broadcasting to the world. You hearing me because God has given us creative ability and allow other people to use that creative ability. And now I'm using that. Oh, Jesus wished that he could do this. He wished that he could. He said that there would be greater things than these are happening, but he left that for me to do. So I'm glad we got something to do. Yeah, I'm hearing you from UK. All right, from the UK, brother. What's up in the UK? I'm so glad that you're here. The Most High is right there with you, brother, right there in the UK. You ain't got to worry about it. He's right here. Please, let's not die. Let's not wait. Let us, I, I, what does the scripture, the old scripture say? I shall not die, but live and declare the glory of God. So today, my friend, with all my heart, with all my love, I wish you peace and love and joy. Today, my friend, my, my saying is, I, the way I close my messages are like this. You have to have clean hands and a pure heart. Keep your hands clean and your heart pure. Your hands is what you do in life. Your heart is what you think in life. With those two things, then you shall see God. Because those who people have clean hands and pure heart, they say that you will see God. You will see him just as he is. And that's why you'll be a part of his work. And you'll get up off of your assets. So I want you to get up off of your assets today and walk in your authority. And a gifted, appointed, anointed, spirit-filled individuals who love God and love humanity just like he wants us to do. All right, now, this is Pastor Omar. Thank you for hanging in there with me. I will talk to you a little bit later. This is Pastor Omar, and I'm out.
You're welcome, brother. Now I'm just trying to figure out how to stop.
Later. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.